Hello everyone. So this is Navam Saksana. Today we will discuss about SDN, uh, Software Defined Networking. So this is going to be an interesting lecture. So before jumping to SDN, I would like to discuss uh, some points on traditional network, how our traditional network looks like then we will be able to understand idn clearly so suppose that in any organization uh, there are some computers which are connected using the switch so these are some computers these and these are connected different switch these are some computers these are connected to this different switch these four computers these four computers are connected to different switch so so these are access layer switch as per cisco hierarchy so again these switch are connected to uh, another switches at different level okay so this is the access layer this is distribution layer switch and this is core layer router okay so access layer switches are connected to distribution layer switches and distribution layer switches are connected to core layer router so to provide the uh, redundancy we have connected uh, two routers and then these two routers are again connected with firewall and then this firewall is connected with isp router so this is how our traditional network looks like so suppose that for example if we want to deploy any site then we will deploy these computers then we will connect uh, these computers with these switches one by one and then we will send any engineer at the site and uh, that engineer will uh, configure uh, will do initial configuration over here and then he will go at this location then he will do his initial configuration over here then he will go here and then he will go do some unique configuration here then here then he will configure some in initial configuration over here and now the work is not finished he need to go here so every he need to go to each and every network devices and do the configuration okay so That's why we call this is a, not a centralized control. We have a distributed control. We cannot control all the devices from one place. It is a traditional network. We need to go, if we, if we find any issue in any particular location, then we need to go to that particular location and then we need to uh, insert the console cable and then we need to configure and then we need to troubleshoot and configure and do the changes so that's why we say that this is a uh, distributed control in traditional network we have distributed control also we need to do the manual configuration on each and every network device there is no any option to do uh, automatic configuration there is no concept we need to go and if we do um, manual configuration then there are chances of human error because see these are four computers are connected over here three computers connected over here so we need to do some same config some set of some same set of configuration on each network devices we know this but we have no option in traditional network we need to go each and every router and switches and we need to do that same configuration on each and every router which will increase our time so this is wastage of time also so that's why cost is also high here uh, we need to hire some site engineers over there and that engineer is also need to be expert on the networking device devices right and uh, 
this is not finished. This is just only a one side. Okay. If in future if we if any company open another site in another location, then we need to go over there and we need to repeat the same process in there also. Then we have another location because companies have thousands of sites. Any big organization have lakhs of sites. So we need to go each and every year. So how much big problem it is and big problem will uh, will become a complex problem over here because it will be become it will become difficult to find what is the root cause of the problem where where is the problem this is the first challenge and then we need to find if we find that that problematic router or switch then we need to go and manually do the configuration and manually do the troubleshooting so this is very big challenge so HD WAN comes as a solution and HD WAN HD WAN is a part of HDN. So when you, we are discussing here over HDN, which is software defined networking. So in HDN software defined networking, we get centralized control. In traditional network, we were getting distributed control but in sdn we get centralized control so what do we mean by centralized control like we need to go to each and every network devices to do the configuration because we have the centralized control in the sdn so by sitting in any one place i can control all the network devices so this is the centralized control. Also, if I deploy any another new site, then also I don't need to go over there. So this is centralized control. Okay, and in SDN, we also don't need to do the manual configuration on each and every network device. We can do automatic configuration in SDN. We have various uh, options to avail this feature. We can use ZTP, we can use PNP, which, uh, which will be used to automatically configure these network devices. We don't need to go to that particular router and configure and we can do this by sitting in only one place. So we have one, uh, one single plane of glass from there we can configure and we can do automatic configuration. X and third benefit we get from SGN is extensibility. If we uh, if we get uh, another sites, if we get n number of sites, then also we need to we don't need to go to each and every site. We can. Uh, we can easily configure and manage all the network devices from one single plane of glass or one controller. So extensibility is easy here. And the most important thing is cost is low. The cost is uh, comparable low. When you see that you don't need to go to each and every uh, location troubleshoot that thing so it saves cost also so this is the benefit of hdn hdn is is a software defined networking in hdn we have uh, some controllers from where we can configure and monitor all the network devices if we want to configure if you want to do any configuration on network devices, so we can configure template from one HDN controller, and that template will be will get installed on all the network devices. So this is the benefit of HDN. Also, we have uh, various benefits like. Uh, in HDN family, we have three types of 
technology where we can implement it like um so these are the switches these are the switches these are router these are firewall this is I isp so if we want to um if we want to implement implement hdn over here in land sided on these switch switch two switch three switch four switch five switch six then we can use hd access technology over here the controller which we use in hd access is dnec so from dnec we can configure and control all the network devices and on aci with the help of aci we can use a data center. Uh, we can use this ACI technology in data center. In data center, uh, we have EPIC. Uh, EPIC is a controller which we use in data center. And if we want to use HDN technology on Vanage devices over here, this is, these are Vanage routers. So then we can use HD WAN. And the controllers of HD WAN are we manage, we want, and we smart. So, in my uh, current lecture, we will be discussing about HD WAN technology. And on HD WAN technology, we will be uh, focused on these Vanage, Vanage devices. These are Vanage routers. So, and traditionally, what devices we were using? That will not uh, that will not be useful in HD WAN. In Cisco HD WAN, we have deployed uh, different devices called WebTailor devices. So we will go deeper in that in my next coming uh, videos. So please like and subscribe my video. Thank you and just please uh, do any comment if you uh, want to have any. I want to ask any question and reach out to me on subam section and network at the gmail.com. Thank you.